Hey guys, Dr. David Jockers here, doctor of natural medicine. And today we are answering the question, why is my cholesterol high on a ketogenic diet and lifestyle? And this is a really common question that I get as I teach and coach people on the keto program and the keto lifestyle. And so the first thing we got to address when it comes to cholesterol in general is we got to ask ourselves, what is cholesterol? Because you know, we get all these numbers as far as like, hey, high cholesterol, low cholesterol, but really what is cholesterol? And so cholesterol is basically this, this molecule that our body produces in our liver, okay? And we also get it from animal-based foods. When we're consuming animal-based foods, we can eat it. And what our body does with that is it actually uses it to take fat-soluble nutrients like vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin K, vitamin D, out to cell membranes. Also on top of that, cholesterol is very important for the brain. So there's a lot of cholesterol that helps make up brain and nervous system tissue. It's also very important for sex hormones like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. We need cholesterol. It's really the, the backbone for producing all of those sex hormones. So cholesterol is an essential molecule in our body. We absolutely need it. We're told it's the boogeyman and we're told that it's terrible for us. And uh, we're also told that if our cholesterol is above 200, that we are at risk for cardiovascular disease. But I disagree with that number, and the research actually shows that that's not the case. In fact, research actually says, particularly the Framingham Heart Study, where they took this group of people in Framingham, Massachusetts, and they've studied them over like 40 years, and looked at all these different factors when it, when it came to metabolic health as well as cardiovascular health, and what they showed was that actually, believe it or not, people that uh, had cholesterol lower than 200, 40%, I should say 40% of the people that had heart attacks. So if you took 100% overall or 100 people, 40 of them had cholesterol levels lower than 200, which we are told is really healthy. And so 40% under 200 have a heart attack, 60% over 200. So it's not that big a difference right there, number one. Um, number two is that actually having a cholesterol level under 180 increases your risk of stroke by three times. And whenever I see a very low cholesterol, I get concerned. Number one reason why people have very low cholesterol is malnutrition, oftentimes issues with their gut. And so we gotta look at that uh, in detail. Now, let's take a look at LDL, right? We're told LDL is the bad cholesterol. HDL is the good cholesterol. But what does LDL actually do? So LDL means low density lipoprotein. So it's a protein with a cholesterol molecule to it. And it actually takes fat soluble antioxidants, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin D, vitamin K, and it brings it to cell membranes. Cholesterol, believe it or not, is a healing molecule. We need it, we have it within every cell membrane of our body has it. So every cell is like a circle on the outer membrane we have cholesterol there. We need a lot of cholesterol. We also need a lot of saturated fat on that outer membrane. LDL helps bring cholesterol. It helps bring saturated fat. It also helps to bring uh, your fat soluble antioxidants to the cell. So why would LDL go up? It's gonna go up when there's inflammation. So chronic inflammation is really the major driver of high LDL and I'll get into that in detail. Now HDL is kind of like the cleanup, right? It helps pull uh, basically different cholesterol molecules and bring them back to the liver. So basically it helps pull stuff out of the bloodstream and bring it back to the liver so then it can be reused. And so we, we need a good amount of HDL, right? Because the problem with cholesterol is it's prone to oxidation. And so when you have cholesterol molecules that are just sitting in the bloodstream for a long period of time, they can be oxidized by free radicals which can then cause problems in our arterial bed. So we've gotta have this recycling process and a good balance of LDL to HDL. Now, the issue that we have is when we have what's called the terrible triad. The terrible triad is this, when we have high LDL, low HDL, and high triglycerides. So what is a high LDL number? Really, it depends on what the HDL number is. Your HDL should always be between 50 and 80. That's kind of the optimal range. 50 on the low end, 80, maybe up to 90 on the high end. Okay, if it's really high HDL, oftentimes it's an, an infection that's causing that. Uh, and so if it's real high, up over 90, you know, we gotta look at other, other things that are going on. However, in general, it should be between 50 and 80. Your LDL to HDL ratio 
should be three to one or less, three to one or less. If it's greater than that, and you also have a high triglyceride level, it's called the terrible triad. Your triglyceride to HDL ratio should be two to one or less. So let's say your HDL is 60, your LDL is 150, so your overall cholesterol is 210, but that ratio is great, it's less than three to one. And let's say your triglyceride levels are 100. So in general, that's less than two. Now, ideally, I like to see triglyceride to HDL ratio closer to one. I like to see it in that range. Like if your HDL is 60, your triglycerides ideally should be around 60 as well. That would be better. It's kind of a sign of uh, basically insulin sensitivity in your body. And that kind of takes us into the, to really the, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is if you do have the terrible triad, high LDL, right? A greater than three to one ratio of LDL to HDL and a high triglyceride level, which is greater than two to one a triglyceride to HDL. If you do have that and you have low HDL, less than 50, so your HDL, let's say is 40 or in the forties in general. Okay, here's what we gotta look at. Number one, we gotta look at insulin resistance. So if your blood sugar's off, then that's gonna throw off, uh, it's gonna cause more inflammation in your body, it's gonna throw off your LDL to HDL ratios as well as your overall triglyceride to HDL ratios and set you up for metabolic disease where we see this terrible triad of high LDL to HDL, high triglyceride to HDL, low HDL levels. And so insulin resistance is number one thing. What are other tests to look at insulin resistance? Fasting glucose. Fasting glucose ideally should be 90, really should be between like 60 and 90. Your hemoglobin A1C, which is like a three to four month period of time, take a look at the level of glycation or blood sugar, um, the blood sugar's damaging effects on the hemoglobin in your blood cells. And that should ideally be between 4.5 to 5.2. If you get up over that, particularly if you get up to 5.7, that's kind of that pre-diabetic state at 5.7. And if you get up to 6.5, that's full-blown diabetes. So we gotta look at that. We also need to look at your fasting insulin levels. Fasting insulin levels ideally should be three or less or at least five or less. So if you were to test your insulin in the morning when you're not consume, haven't consumed any food, it should be ideally three or less and you know certainly not above five or you definitely have a sign of insulin resistance going on in your body. So that's the first thing we gotta check. Second thing is thyroid. See, thyroid hormone, T3, active thyroid hormone, plays a, a very important role in helping activate the LDL receptor on the cell. So if we're not getting good activation of the LDL receptor, our body's gonna naturally produce higher amounts of LDL. And I see this so commonly where somebody's LDL levels are really high and it's because they have low levels of active T3. Now, how does the thyroid work? Well, the brain sends a message down to the thyroid, okay? Something called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, to the thyroid tells it produce thyroid hormone. Now, the thyroid produces, 93% of its production is T4, which is inactive thyroid hormone. It only produces 7% active thyroid hormone. Now, the inactive thyroid hormone, which is what the thyroid mostly produces, circulates, goes to the liver, and, and converts a lot of, 60% of the conversion of T4 to active T3, which the cells can use, is made in the liver. Another 20% is at the gut. So what blocks active T3, T3 production and utilization? Well, leaky gut or problems with the gut, maybe infections in the gut, liver problems. So a sluggish liver is one of the top causes of poor T4 to T3 conversion. Also autoimmunity, where the body itself is attacking the thyroid. You see conditions like Hashimoto's uh, that are associated with that. And then also inflammation at the cell membrane level. So if our our cell membranes are inflamed or if we have micronutrient deficiencies, then we're not gonna get that the proper T3 or thyroid hormone expression of the cells and we can end up with high LDL. So that's really you know, the second big thing. The third big thing is chronic stress. When our body's under a lot of stress, our body prepares for more tissue damage. So when we're under a lot of mental, emotional stress, our body thinks we're literally in a life-threatening circumstance and we may have a lot of tissue damage. If we were to have a lot of tissue damage, like a trauma, for example, like if you were to fall off of a roof, 
your cholesterol is gonna go high. Why is that? Because we need more cellular healing to take place. We need more fatty acids. We need to rebuild these cell membranes. We need a lot of fat soluble antioxidants. We need all this stuff. And so we're gonna increase the overall amount of cholesterol because of that. So that may be a reason. You may just have a lot of stress in your life. You may have had a trauma. A trauma will do that. Also a lot of exposure to environmental toxins. Maybe you're you know, breathing in mold toxins, for example or some sort of other environmental toxin. Maybe you've been exposed to a lot of radiation. This can also trigger an increase in cholesterol because you need more cellular healing to take place. So we gotta look at that, just stress on the body in general. Fourth thing is infections or really anything that triggers inflammation. So what can trigger inflammation? Well, insulin resistance can trigger inflammation. That was the first thing we talked about. Stress triggers inflammation. Food sensitivities can trigger inflammation. And so oftentimes if people are doing a ketogenic diet and we've ruled out all the other things, we've ruled out poor thyroid hormone function, we've ruled out insulin resistance, we've ruled out environmental exposures, we've ruled out chronic infections like H. pylori infections or parasites. So we've ruled all those things out, then I'm thinking food sensitivity. Maybe they have an egg sensitivity or a dairy sensitivity. So try taking out some of those things. Maybe it's nuts. So try to take out some of these susceptible foods. I would say eggs, dairy, and nuts would be really three good things to start with on a ketogenic diet to take out and see how your body responds to that. When you take out a food sensitivity, oftentimes you'll notice you just have more energy. Uh, you just have better mental clarity, better cognitive acceleration. Sometimes if you had rashes on your skin, those rashes will go away or eczema will go away. If you had pain in your joints, the pain can go away. So try a food elimination diet where you take out some of those foods and see how your body responds, okay? So those are really the four major reasons why people end up having high LDL, low HDL, and high triglycerides, which is that terrible triad. Number one, insulin resistance. Number two, thyroid hormone, poor thyroid hormone expression. Number three, we talked about chronic stress in the body. Number four, chronic inflammation in the body. So look at those things. Now, when we take LDL particles to begin with, we also actually can break them down into subparticles. We actually look at the different types of particles. And there's a large buoyant LDL particle that's called a pattern A. Uh, and it's a healthy, it's associated with reduced risk of, of cardiovascular disease. And so the large buoyant molecules have a lot of fat soluble antioxidants, a lot of vitamin A, a lot of vitamin E, vitamin D, all these powerful fat soluble antioxidants. That's the pattern A. We actually want a lot of pattern A. Very healthy for our body, really help with cellular healing, rebuilding cell membranes. So we really want those. The pattern B are what we want to avoid. These are the small, dense LDL particles. And why do we want to avoid those? because they really, they're very weak, they're deficient in fat soluble nutrients. And so because of that, they're very prone to oxidation. And because of their small size, they can actually slip into the little junctions within your endothelial lining, your, the internal lining, the internal uh, layer of your blood vessels. And because they can slip into little crevices, they stay in your system and then free radicals will get in there and start to damage them and they can create plaques and scarring on your arteries. So we really want to reduce those. Now, studies have shown, in fact, great study that was in the annuals of uh, internal medicine in September 2014, what they did was they took a group of people, 60 of them, they put them on a low fat diet. So, you know, we're told, hey, a low fat diet's really good for our heart. Okay, they put these people on a low fat diet and then they took 59 other people, so pretty much the same amount of people, and they put them on more or less like a ketogenic diet, a low carb, high fat diet. And what they showed is that the people that were on the low carb, high fat diet had significantly better weight loss. These were people that were overweight. They had significantly better weight loss. They had better LDL to HDL ratio, triglyceride to HDL ratio, um, and they had an improved pattern where the LDL particles were, were moving in the direction of this pattern A, right? Where they had, where they were the large buoyant particles with a lot of fat soluble antioxidants. And that's why a ketogenic diet is one of the very best things that you could be doing because it helps improve insulin resistance. So it helps improve insulin um, and blood sugar regulation. 
It actually can be very good for thyroid hormone um, and reduces inflammation throughout the body as well as oxidative stress, creates a switching over to this pattern A, large buoyant LDL particle, which is exactly what we want. And this is why I recommend using a well-formulated, nutrient-dense, ketogenic diet and lifestyle to help improve your cholesterol levels and reduce your risk of developing cardiovascular disease.